We're talking about compassion too in the Dalai Lama. Yeah. The whole time has felt nothing but compassion toward the Chinese on yeah. this matter. Yeah, well, you, compassion can be a little fierce. There's right, such a thing as fierce compassion. compassion. Right. You know, it's like mom, when the kid is about to stick their finger in the electric socket, she screams, don't do that. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit fierce, but it's out of compassion for the child. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm not saying everybody's like this lala all the time. But, uh, but yes, he has, he has used, you know, in Buddhism, the meditation on the enemy. The enemy is the great teacher of your patience, mm -hmm. your tolerance, and your forgiveness. That's, uh, that is like chapter and verse of the Buddhist psychology. And Dalai Lama teaches that. And I think you've talked about muscular compassion. What, is that, what does that look yeah, like? Yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah. Well, muscular compassion. Well, um, as I said, they have a lot of nitric oxide there. Tibetans, they have like something like 100 times the nitric oxide level that, we, that low altitude people have. And your know, nitric oxide is what bodybuilders use, mm -hmm. you know, like Arnold and things, because you know, <laughs> it increases blood flow dramatically in the system. Right. And so um, they're muscular. <laughs> they, <laughs> actually, they wrestle yaks, <laughs> actually, and they're compassionate. That right? phrase is from Force for Good. What's that? Is that phrase is from Force for right, Good, Muscular right, Compassion, yes. which is... Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, oh, I because uh, I, I use the phrase because I, right, I was shocked right because, word. you know, I thought compassion, it's like being really nice to a lot of people, yeah. but it's, it's... The Dalai Lama is a social activist. Yes. He's a, a really... Uh, he, he's fierce when it comes to opposing whatever harms people. So it, there's this ferocity as needed, and the default mode is... The, the compassion we think of. That's a great so that's phrase. It. Is that your phrase, muscular compassion? I, it might be my phrase, but I have to say this is he a great is book. He is the great writer. Listen, like this is a great book, and I want to say Bob has been really uh, not saying how much <laughs> he has been, uh, not at the level of Dalai Lama, but more than probably anyone else in the West, an advocate for Tibet and for the Dalai Lama uh, all these years, and I want to thank you well, for that. Well, thank you, Tim. And, and I, think I do love the guy. And uh, although we have our arguments too, you know, because I'm a slow learner, you know, so I don't necessarily <laughs> listen to everything right away. But, uh, you know, see, I consider his political advice is the only, he should be, they should go meet him in their G20s and G7s. And of course, Pope Francis is right in the same ballpark now. I think the previous one a little bit too much into their red Gucci loafers, you know. Right. But, but Pope, Fra Pope Francis is awesome. He's just right out of front of the same mold. And there's a lot of people like that popping up everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know, we, we are now like that. We should all be happy that we have an absolute disaster government mm -hmm. that is completely, obviously incompetent. And this, of course, they're going to cause some damage. But then we'll get back the House and the Senate in 2018 because we'll all realize it's too ridiculous. And they only got in there because only half of us vote because we're so complacent in this country. And now we're not complacent and we will stay uncomplacent because they'll still kill, keep doing disasters. So that's actually really lucky. It shows how ridiculous the militaristic, you know, industrial, <laughs> oligarchic government, laissez-faire capitalism. Social capitalism is fine. It's actually excellent. We don't want like boring communism road to serve them type of thing. We want nice, compassionate capitalism, that's where, and that's possible. Buddhists like merchants, you know, Buddhism spread throughout Asia and the world because they liked merchants. They, Buddha was from the warrior class, but he favored the merchant class. Because the great thing about the merchant class is when they go out and trade with somebody and far, far, you know, across the road, it's not everybody gets something out of the deal. The problem with the military approach is you kill your customer. You take everything they have, and then they're not there to deal with next year. You know, you wreck the place. And this seemed to work for the last few thousand years, since the time of Jesus and Buddha. And everybody said, don't do that. But they, nobody listened. And now they're going to have to listen, because nobody wins these wars now. And they just destroy other countries, is all they can do. And uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't fit von Clausewitz's definition of a victory. You know, All you get is terrorism out of it, because you killed everybody's grandmother right. or granddaughter. And then it won't, you know, you can't get them to do what you want through war. Mm -hmm. so, so the guy now who's 54 billion more for the military, oh, let's do this, do that, you know.